Hello friends, this video on chemical bonding part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 11. The reason why we studied this is because we will discuss the bond parameter, the type of bond, which bond is weaker, which is stronger and all this. So, there are some parameters to define the bond. There are something called bond length, bond angle, bond enthalpy, bond order, bond structure and the polarity of bonds. These are some of the bond parameters. For example, for a student, what is this parameter? The parameter will be the student name, the student age, student sex, there is a male or female, and student uh, class, this is the class days, or you can have uh, students uh, height. So these are the parameters which determine the student. Right? A student you can have or student's roll number, a lot of schools have this roll number. So a student can be classified using his uh, name, age, sex, class, height, roll number. You can find the students, right? So the parameters for a student. Similarly, for a bond, these are the parameters we talk about. We talk about the bond length, we talk about the bond angle, we talk about the energy released or required to break a bond, we talk about the bond order, the number of bond. We talk about the resonance structure also in the bond which makes the uh, whole molecule to be more stable and we talk about the polarity of bonds also, right, there is no charged or non-charged. We will discuss all these uh, bond parameters now. So let's understand that these parameters are required for us to have a better understanding of the bonds. Similar to this case, for example, if we have the name, age, and all these parameters for a student, you tend to understand student better, right, or how much marks he got in the last exams. So with these you can understand the student better. Similarly with these parameters bond length, bond angle, bond enthalpy, bond order, resonance, structure, polarity of bonds, you can understand the bond better. So let's start with the bond length. Bond length is nothing but the equilibrium distance between two bonded atoms in a molecule. As I told one molecule has n number of bonds. So in a molecule, if I have two atoms and the equilibrium distance between these two atoms in a molecule is called the bond length. Typically, if uh, the covalent radii, please note, I, I just, uh, the covalent radii I am talking about, we will discuss the types of radii, radius actually, the bond radius, covalent radius, and different of radius. So, the covalent radius of the two atoms are Ra and Rb. In the bond length this Ra plus Rb. So you see in this case this is Ra and this is Rb. The bond length is this plus this. And how do we find the bond length? So using spectroscopic x-ray diffraction, electron diffraction, there are various techniques uh, given by the physics world actually. So these techniques help us to find the bond length experimentally. So in the lab if you have let's suppose uh, oxygen molecule or let's suppose you have HCl, you can take any molecule and you want to find the bond length, you can use these techniques to find the bond length. Not sure in your lab this is available, but these techniques are used to find the bond length. And some bond length are given, for example, OH bond length is 96 picometer, CH is 107, NO is 137. So we have different kind of bond length. Also if you see carbon, carbon bond, single bond is 154, when we talk about double bond, the length decrease. We talk about triple bond, the length decreases further. So these are the experimented value. I'll say experimented found value of the bond length for various bond which we use in our day-to-day -day chemistry. You don't need to uh, learn this or mug up this. Just understand that these values can be experimentally found using these techniques, and we have some bond length already known to us. As I told, as I use the word covalent radii, so let's talk about the various atomic radii. The first type of atomic radii is a covalent radius. So this is the radius of the atom's core. Please note, is the radius of the atom core. So for example, in this case, you see, this is my covalent radius, 99. The total is 198, so I have two uh, atoms in the molecule and they are totally stuck together. Total distance I'll find between two molecules divide by two. I'll get this distance. That is my covalent radii. 
and it is the radius of atom core right then we have something called van der waal radii this represents the whole size of atom and includes the valence cell also we'll understand more this when we talk about van der waal force which is the force of attraction between two molecules so let's suppose i have one molecule oxygen molecule i have a more oxygen molecule but when you see oxygen let's suppose if you see oxygen there are bunch of oxygen molecules right the bunch of oxygen molecules and they are held by some force and that force is van der waal force we'll discuss in the next chapter the van der waal force which uh tides up different uh, molecules right if you want to uh, recap i can give you a recap so if you talk about the atom in the atom you have this nucleus and then you have electrons right they are held up with some force so you, this this has a positive charge is a negative charge they held up with a positive and negative coulombic force and then we have with atoms this atom you have you have a more atom right and they are held again with a force those i'm talking we we, we are discussing about those uh, forces right um, the electron sharing and uh, sometimes the electron transfer and we get molecule now but this molecule will be very small if you see oxygen let's say liquid oxygen there will be have tons of tons of oxygen molecules they also uh, tied together by some force so example i have one oxygen molecule one oxygen molecule there are so many oxygen molecules they are tied together by some force and that force is called van der waal force we will discuss this in the next chapter so if you are not understanding this hold on we'll have a clear understanding of this in the next chapter so with van der waal force we have van der waal radii and this represents overall size of atom for example if you see there are two independent oxygen molecule this is molecule 1 and this is molecule 2 right so if you see these two molecules are totally independent but they are held by some van der waal force right and now if you see this radius we talk about this radius here to here and you divide by 2 you get this radius this radius is my van der waal radius so this represents the whole atom and this uh, covalent radius represents the atom core so hope you understand with this figure so because the covalent radius represents the atom core and van der waal represents the whole size of atom so when we talk about bond length we talk about the covalent radius because we want to add this and this if it is suppose hydrogen this is chlorine so the bond length will be you want to add the covalent radii of the two atoms not the van der waal radii because the covalent radii represents atom core and the van der waal radii represents overall size of atom right there is something called ionic radii also in case of ions they are uh, in in case of crystalline uh, state they are you know separated by they have some space and they have coulombic attraction that binds them and that is ionic radius which will again discuss more in the next chapter and then we have something called metallic radius also so when we have metal bonds as i told metallic bonds are there so they are held by a metallic radius so we'll discuss all these in the next few slides next chapter actually for this chapter just understand that we are concerned only for the covalent radius and since we are concerned only about the covalent radius here is the covalent radius given for some of the case hydrogen it is 37 carbon if it is single bond is 77 double bond 67 triple bond 60 nitrogen also for single bond 74 double bond 65 triple bond 75 Similarly, oxygen single bond sixty six double bond fifty seven. Fluorine has sixty four. Uh, picometer as a bond length. Fluorine has ninety nine and so. On. So if you if you don't need to memorize this chart, just the information I told that chemists have found these values experimentally and has provided us these values. Then we can understand these uh, atoms and molecules in a better way. So after bond length, the next parameter I told was a bond angle. this defines the angle between the orbitals containing the electron pairs around the center line for example if you see the hydrogen uh, molecule it has the angle of 104.5 degree and this value also they got from the experiment using the uh, spectrometer or x ray and all these techniques they actually saw this molecule and saw the angle between hydrogen and oxygen to be 104.5 so bond angle is nothing but angle between orbitals containing electron pairs around central atoms 
and it is expressed in degree and which can be experimentally described using spectroscopy. This helps in determining shape of molecule. Please note, this helps in determining shape of molecule. The next parameter I told was the bond enthalpy. This is nothing but the amount of energy required to break one mole of bond of particular type between two atoms. So you have, uh, let's suppose, uh, oxygen, liquid oxygen. You want to break this and make it two oxygen atom in a gaseous form. This is like liquid at surface. So the energy required to break this liquid into oxygen and oxygen, that is the bond enthalpy. So the unit of bond enthalpy this is energy, is kilojoule per mole. For example, HH bond enthalpy is 435.8 kilojoule per mole. This is the experimented value. That means if I have hydrogen gas, if I have to, this is a molecule actually. If I want to convert this into two atoms, put it apart at infinite distance, this much energy, 435.8 kilojoule of energy will be required to break one mole of hydrogen molecule into atoms. So in case this was for the hydrogen kind of stuff, for polyatomic molecules, for example, H2O and all, the it is more complicated, things are a little complicated. For example, in case of water, if you see, for H2O, I need 502 kilojoule per mole to take out first hydrogen. To take out second hydrogen from the same remaining OH molecule, to take out second, I need 427. So in that case, we talk about the average bond enthalpy. Correct? Because in the case of polyatomic molecule, if you see, things are a little different. So to break the first to take out first hydrogen, it takes more energy. Take out second hydrogen, it takes less energy. So what we do, we take out the average of this and use it. Then we have something called bond order. Bond order is something which has various definitions. So in case of the Lewis description, I'll use now because till now we have this, uh, uh, studied only the Lewis description. The bond order is nothing but the number of bonds. But we have more definition for this. Well, I will take this later when we'll discuss the other theories. I told that there are four theories. Out of this, I have covered only one. There are three more theories. The molecular orbital theory gave a different definition for bond order. We'll, we'll explain this when we go for a molecular orbital theory. In fact, we'll have a question in the end, which we'll have, uh, which where we'll define the bond order based on different theories. Right? But for this Lewis theory, the bond order is nothing but the number of bonds. For example, in H2, there is one bond. N2, there was triple bond. O2, there was double bond, right? So, so in this case, the bond order is one. In this case, it is three. In this case, it is two. Correct. Also note that isoelectronic molecules, which have same number of electrons, have identical bond orders. And with the increase in bond order, the bond enthalpy increases. Why? Obviously, because as I told, right, carbon, carbon, single bond, carbon, carbon, double bond, carbon, carbon, triple bond, the bond enthalpy, the bond length decreased. I don't have the correct values, but it is this x, this was x minus y, and this is x minus y minus z. Right, I'm talking about the bond length. And the enthalpy increased actually. Enthalpy increased. If it was a, it was a plus b, it was a plus b plus c. Here all x, y, z, a, b, c are positive. I don't have exact values, so I just use this x, y, and z. So carbon, carbon, double bond, single bond was the bond length was x. Carbon, carbon, double bond, the bond length decreased. Carbon, triple bond, the bond length decreased further. But if we talk about the enthalpy, the energy required, so this increased. Carbon, carbon, double bond, single bond required a energy. Carbon double bond required E plus P energy and carbon double bond required E plus B plus C energy. So this is something we have seen. So these are linked actually. Bond order, bond enthalpy, bond length, everything is linked. Just to understand the bond properly, we have uh, under, we are trying to understand the various properties of bond. Bond order. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests. Get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.